Uh, let's basically get to talk about the two exceptions to the main two exceptions to the electron configuration. So basically, the main two exceptions are chromium and copper. In these cases, uh, there is a condition that a completely full or half filled up D sub level is more stable than a partially filled D sub level. So we'll see basically an excitement of an electron from the S going to the D orbital. Okay, so this is our periodic table. We'll start by looking at the uh, first one, which is of course chromium, right? So I'll use the noble gas electron configuration. If you are not acquainted with that, you can watch a video using the tag above so that you know how to go about it. So according to the noble gas electron configuration, periods are very necessary. So that's the first period, second, third, and the fourth. So we realize that for chromium, we are in the fourth period, right? So you need to look at the previous period, which is uh, having argon as the last noble gas. So put argon. Now from there, we are now in the fourth period, right? Before we get to, to the chromium, we know that the S... The first group and the second group are the S broke. Whatever is here, the transition elements are in the D broke. And then these are the P broke. We understand all that from that video, if you watched it about the noble gas electron configuration. All right? So before we basically get to get to the D broke, we have to pass through the S broke. So the fourth period matches up with the S and the P. So we have four S. So first to and since there are two groups in the S block, we have to put two electrons. So 4S2, which represents calcium. Now, we are not interested in calcium yet, so we have to proceed, right? So this, this, this entire part is the D block. So the D starts from Scandia. So we have to count how many electrons we need for us to get to uh, chromium. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So now we say there's a bit of lagging. There's a lagging by one when you're dealing with a D block. So since we're in the fourth period, we expect that the D will be lagged by one, which is 3D. So we expect to have four electrons in the D block. Now, if you go back to the statement that we had read, this is the normal, this is the expected electron configuration, but it doesn't apply to chromium. So it is better the chromium and the copper atoms are more stable when the D is either half filled or fully filled than any other. So therefore, it would be better for the electron to move from the S orbital and get excited to the D block so that it becomes half filled. So the, the S will lose one electron and it will go to the D, so but it becomes really five. That was the exception that we were talking about. And of course, the same concept applies to copper. Okay. So what do we expect of copper? So I'll write that a bit down there. So if you look at copper, if we start counting from where the D-block is starting from, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the expected electron configuration of copper, since we're in the same period with chromium, it will also use argon, 4S2, 3D, 9. That's what takes, that's expected. Now, there is also need of an excitement from the S there, so it becomes fully filled. That is going to be more stable. And these are the main two exceptions to so electron configuration. Hopefully, you now understand. Thank you very much for watching.